Hi everyone, my name is Katie Byers. I'm the Assistant Director of Career Services here at Pitt Greensburg. Today I'll be sharing a few tips and tricks for writing an effective resume. I'll begin the presentation by covering a few basic aspects of the resume, such as formatting and content. And then after we'll take a look at each section of the resume and I'll provide some recommendations on what to include to highlight your experiences and accomplishments. So it might be helpful to take some notes or even have your resume open as you follow along. I'm sure at some point in your high school or college career, you've heard that resumes are important and that's completely true. Throughout your life, your resume will essentially be the story you tell of your academic and professional experiences, skills, and accomplishments. Resumes are used in a variety of settings, such as networking events, career fairs, applications for jobs, internships, graduate programs, you name it. Over time, your resume will change a little bit to reflect your most recent experiences and the content that's most relevant to what you're seeking. So it's important to keep updating your resume, even in your professional career, to keep track of your continued achievements. Whether you're just beginning your first resume or updating a current one, we recommend keeping a running draft of all of your experiences. Now this won't necessarily be the same document you use to apply for positions, but it'll make it a lot easier to pull content and tailor your resume as you apply for positions. When applying for jobs, internships, or research opportunities, it's important to tailor your document to the specific opportunities you're seeking. So there's a misconception that once you complete your resume, you can use that same document to apply for several positions. Now this might work in some circumstances, depending on experience and industry, but we strongly recommend tailoring your document for each position you apply to, to the best of your ability. When you get ready to apply for positions, we recommend using the position description as a guide. So you can highlight key terms, skills, and experiences listed in the description and take time to emphasize on your resume how your background aligns with that job description. Now this can be as simple as highlighting key skills within a skill section or just tailoring your bullet points to highlight specific qualities such as leadership and communication. Before we dive into the specifics of resumes, I'd like to pose a quick question for you. On average, how long will an employer take to initially screen a resume? Okay, if you guessed seven seconds, you are correct. When initially screening a resume, employers take approximately seven seconds to review your document and determine whether they want to read more and consider that candidate. That stack can feel very surprising. So knowing that first impressions are so critical, especially in the job search process, we strongly recommend that students take their time on their resume. Having multiple peer people like career services review your document can really shed light on any spelling errors or any areas for improvement. In terms of format, most resumes at the undergraduate level are about one page in length. Depending on your industry of interest and experience, two pages might be just fine, as long as it fills at least half of the second page. If you do notice your content is flowing to the second page, our office can help by recommending some areas for condensing or reformatting the content to fit everything on one page. Generally, font should be between size 10 and 12. The only exception is your name, which should be slightly larger than 12. So about 14 or 16 would be just fine, as long as it's larger than the rest of the content on your resume. Any conservative font style works just great on resumes. The key here is really just to avoid unprofessional looking fonts such as Comic Sans. Your formatting should be consistent throughout your resume. For example, if you choose to align your dates on the right side of, a, of the page, it's important to keep that format consistent throughout the whole resume. When creating a resume, we strongly suggest using a fresh Microsoft Word document. Avoid using templates and text boxes as much as possible for a few reasons. So templates are common and will not really make yours stand out. Instead, beginning with a fresh Word document allows you to add your own personal, subtle style. We recommend not using text boxes because many companies use electronic programs known as appl application tracking systems to read your resume and pull keywords. Most ATS programs can't read content in text boxes and headers, so make sure that your resume is compatible as possible and stick with a basic Word document for this. Content within your resume should be listed in reverse chronological order, meaning the most recent experiences will be listed first, followed by less recent ones. I've seen some students include their references on their resume, 
but I would actually recommend including that information in a complete separate document. This will allow you to really maximize on the space within your resume. We recommend using boldface and italics throughout your document to emphasize important content. For example, my personal preference is to bold the company names and italicize job or position titles. This helps employers swiftly read through your document and easily identify where to find specific content. It's really important to pay attention to grammar and spelling and even punctuation. Many employers will say that they toss out any resumes that have errors on it because it shows a lack of attention to detail. Always have a few people review your document before sending it. This goes without saying, but always make sure that you're being honest and accurate within your resume. This is especially important if you're including a skills section. I like to tell students to prepare their resume with the expectation that the employer could ask you to elaborate on absolutely anything you list within it. This slide shows an example of a traditional resume to give you an idea of how each section could be formatted. We will be discussing the resume from the top down, so I won't spend too much time on this slide. I did want to note a few points though. So first, take a look at how the dates are formatted. Within the resume, dates are typically right aligned and can either begin at the same point or end at the same point. For this resume, the dates are all aligned to the edge of the page. Something else to note is the formatting throughout the document. Remember, an employer is only taking a few seconds to scan your document, so it's important that the content is eye appealing and easy to navigate. One way to do this is to use all caps, bold, and underlined section headings. Within the sections, boldface and italics can be used to further highlight the content. The important thing here to remember is consistency. Be sure to apply the same formatting throughout your entire resume. Resumes are truly unique to everyone because everyone has unique experiences, accomplishments, and skills to highlight. Regardless of experience, everyone should include three basic sections, contact information, education, and experience. Now experience can incorporate any paid or unpaid work, internships, or even on-campus roles, depending on your own individual experience. The list to the right highlights additional sections that could be included based on your own unique experience. We'll take a look at a few of the most common sections in the next few slides. The first section of the resume should always be your contact information. In this section, you should include your name, your phone number, and email address. Your name should always be the largest and most bold part of your resume, so the employer can easily identify that it's yours. You can also include your address, but it's not required. If you're applying to any out-of-state opportunities, I recommend either not listing it or specifying that you're looking to relocate. Email addresses should be professional. Your PIT email address is just fine if you want to include that. If you have more than one email address, I would recommend just listing one, whichever one you check the most often. That way the employer knows exactly how to reach you. Your LinkedIn URL can also be listed within your contact information section and if you weren't aware, this URL can be customized through your profile settings to simplify the text a bit more. For college students and recent graduates, the education section should come after contact information since it's the most relevant at this point in your career. Within the education section, you can include the institutions from which you have obtained degrees or certificates and from which you are actively pursuing degrees. So for many of you, you will just have Pitt Greensburg in this section. But if you transferred from another college or university, you don't have to list that school unless you received a certificate there or if you would like to list any relevant or unique courses you took. High school should be excluded from this section by your sophomore year. For each school listed, you can include the name and location of the school, your degree, major or majors, expected graduation, and any minors. GPA and Dean's List information can be included as well and we recommend listing GPA if it's above a 3.0. If you are applying for positions or internships related to your academic area, it might be beneficial to list the names of a few relevant courses. This allows you to highlight your knowledge and background in the area and can be helpful if you do not yet have direct experience in your major. The experience section can be customized and categorized based on your own unique experience. For instance, if you have both related and unrelated experience, consider dividing that content into two sections named related or relevant experience and additional experience. 
If you are looking to go into research or teaching, you might even consider having a section devoted to highlighting that specific work from your other experiences. The experience section is truly where you're going to do the majority of your tailoring to those position descriptions, depending on what you're applying to. If you do not have work experience to list, you can include any unpaid, short term or even volunteer work in this section. Really think outside of the box in this area. For each entry, you should include the company name or organization name, position title, location, start and end dates, and three to five bulleted statements that describe your role and your responsibilities for that experience. Writing solid bulleted statements is important to highlight your accomplishments, responsibilities, and transferable skills. Each statement should begin with a verb and follow with a description. When possible, it's helpful to quantify information. For example, how many people did you train? How many children were you responsible for? What was their age range? What was the total budget you were responsible for? So on and so forth. Try to stay within one full line for each statement and use a variety of action words, just like you would as if you were writing a paper. On this slide, we see an example of an entry within the employment history section. This example shows how the content can be aligned and formatted to highlight the position and responsibilities. The bullet points are professionally worded and free of grammatical errors. Each bullet point begins with a verb followed by a, a description. And one additional point to note is that the verbs are conjugated in past tense because the person has already completed this experience. That is one thing you want to be mindful of when you are listing experiences that your, your verbs are conjugated to the relevancy of whether you are still in that position or if it is a previous one. A possible section to include within your resume is a highlight of your campus involvement and leadership experience. If you are involved in clubs and organizations as either a general member or executive board member, including this information showcases to employers that you can balance your time between academics and co-curricular experiences. Employers across industries have expressed that they appreciate seeing these experiences on resumes because it speaks to the applicant's character and sheds light on their interests. If you have a leadership position within a club, it can be helpful to list that as well as a bullet point or two to describe your involvement. Just like with the work experience section, the club or organization name should be included as well as the dates of involvement in any leadership title. Research assistant and teaching assistant positions can be included within this section or they could be listed in a relevant experience section or different section depending on your experience and the layout of your resume. Volunteer and community service can be great to include on your resume, regardless if it's related to your career goals. Just like the campus involvement, many employers appreciate seeing volunteer work on candidates' resumes because it speaks to their character and their interests. Both long-term and one-time volunteer experiences can be listed in this section. If it's a long-term experience or if it's relevant to your career, consider listing bullet points to describe your work. Similar to previous sections, the company or organization name, the location, and dates should be listed. The last common resume section we'll review today is honors and awards. If you have received merit-based scholarships, awards, recognition, or have been inducted into an honor society, consider highlighting this content on your resume. As shown on the slide, it can be helpful to specify honor societies. For instance, Beta 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 is also known as the National Biological Science Honors Society. If you are in your first year or two of college, awards from high school can be included in this section as well. Now we will take a look at how to format references. Typically during the internship and job application process, you may be asked to provide a list of references. This is essentially a list of three to five individuals who can speak to your work ethic within the classroom or in a work setting. If the employer would like to seriously consider you for the position, they might reach out to some of your references to learn more about their perspective and experience with you. It can be helpful to think about who you want to serve as your references before you apply so you can give yourself enough time to reach out to these individuals. As mentioned before, references should be listed on a completely separate document to save some space within your resume. Typically, professors, advisors, mentors, and job and internship supervisors make really good references because they can speak to your accomplishments and work ethic. 
Once you have three to four people identified as references, it's important to reach out to them and ask if they would be willing to serve as a positive reference. When listing the references, it's important to include their name, title, company, and preferred contact information. In addition, include a brief description of your relationship to each reference and for how long you've known them. For example, Dr. Brown was my internship supervisor for four months while I interned with Company X. Just a few things to keep in mind. It's always important to ask if someone is willing to provide a positive reference before listing them as a reference. This allows them to be aware that you are seeking opportunities so they can expect to receive an email or a phone call from your potential employer. As you go through the interview process, keep your references updated. They'll be excited to hear from you. To help your references prepare, consider sending them a copy of your resume, cover letter, and the job or internship description so they can tailor their feedback and responses to relate to the position. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to our presentation on resumes and references today. The Office of Career Services is always here and happy to help you with your career exploration and planning. If you'd like assistance with your resume or in any way with your internship and job search, please don't hesitate to reach out to us by phone or email. So feel free to take a second to jot down our contact information and let us know how we might be able to help you reach your goals. We always enjoy working with students and would be happy to help you with your journey.